underestimate what God has placed in man, 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 man. Yes. You know, people take lightly who we are. I think let me begin from there. Let me talk to people who believe the gospel. The Bible says that we are the seed of Abraham. Huh? Look at such a simple concept. Now, I'm, 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 I'm talking to this man of real estate. But it comes to everyone. The Bible says you're the seed of Abraham. Through faith. And the same Bible says that Abraham inherited the earth. The Bible says the Lord willed the earth to Abraham. Do you know what that means? It means that by reason of the fact that you are the seed of Abraham. Somebody clapped. They got it. The fact that you are the seed of Abraham it means that you have an inheritance on the earth. The jurisdiction of, of heavens favor you to be advantaged anywhere you are on the earth. The earth looks at you as a son of Abraham, a seed of Abraham. This is important. Now, begin from that aspect and tell me, how can you fail to own property just by that blessing? How? You, you explain to me how this whole of the United States of America, when you look at this land, north, east, west, south, there is no property with your name. How is that even possible? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, it's from that perspective that he interprets that life and extends even beyond what he could own for a homestead and realizes he can actually spread this tent further. That he's already advantaged when he looks at a place. He's already advantaged by God by reason of that covenant and identity he carries by, by God through Christ. To believe God for anything. Now, when you, and when you design, I, I, teach, I taught a someone on designing your provisions. When you understand how the wilderness might know, how the Egyptian enslavement mindset is versus the wilderness mindset and the promised land mindset, you'd understand exactly what was God's intention for man. Okay? When they're in Egypt, their testimony is food. Those are people who are living on bare minimum survival instinct. I thank God we have food. You see? That is why when they, when they get them from Egypt and take them into the wilderness, they are crying. We remember the cucumbers we ate, the melons, the leeks, and the onions, the garlic. We ate fish for free. <laughs> they are complaining with Moses. God wants to liberate these people from slavery to become a nation. But they are willing to sacrifice the blessing of becoming a nation for fish, onions, and garlic. And we're living in a dispensation where some people still testify that now they eat well. You understand what I'm saying? They eat well, but it's even unhealthy. They are going to die mm. because the foods they are eating are, you know, one time I was in Hong Kong. So these guys were going for dinner. So they tell me, oh, let's go for dinner. Let's go for dinner. So I tell them, take me to KFC. I miss their chicken. The Chinese turned to me and said, why you eat cheap food, pastor? No, eat cheap food. KFC cheap food. We take you to a good restaurant. You understand? Now, in my Ugandanness, <laughs> KFC was a cool place to go. <laughs> Chinese philosophy. KFC was for the poor. There's a person testifying right now somewhere on the earth that they've eaten KFC. Yes. No offense, eh? If you work there. But there's a person on the earth who is test testifying right now, I actually ate KFC chicken. Thank you, Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? They enter into the wilderness. They are complaining. We're eating manna every day. But why are they eating manna every day? Because the scriptures tell us from crossing the sea to the promised land was supposed to be a 14-day journey, but the Bible tells us they did not go the way of the Philistines, but, but adventure, 
because of the fear in them, the Bible says they might look at the war and return back to Egypt. You understand? Like Egypt, the people in the wilderness deal with the spirit of fear. They are not go-getters. They are not fighters for things. And usually, they are delayed around mountains that they could have taken over quickly. So what should have been a 14-day journey, it became a 40-year journey, of which many actually died because they did not believe. That is why this issue called faith, simply to believe that you can, to believe that it's possible. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the one ingredient that quickens a man out of the wilderness. But also never forget this, it's wisdom. When you find yourself tired of a provision you're sure God himself is sending and no man, it only means you have spent longer in that place than you're supposed to. Have I made sense? If you are sure that it is God giving you that manna and you're tired of eating it every day, like the children of Israel, what was supposed to be a two-week journey, it became a 40-year journey. Meaning it wasn't there God's will actually for them to eat the same meal. Are you following what I'm saying? But if you've got into a place where you're tired of eating this, it only means if you're sure that it is God who sent it, it only means that you have outspent or overspent the grace that has been availed to you for that season and that dispensation, meaning you actually no longer belong there. Now, how many people I know actually the grace and provisions for that dispensation have come to an end, but because of fear or a lack of faith, they're not willing to step out to their next what? It's the same feeling she had because there was a consistent job, predictable pattern, and she has to come out of that. She's asking, how am I? I remember my time in the banking when God had told me it was enough for me to leave. I mean, it was time for me to leave, but I was scared because I had a predictable salary that came in every month, and against that was a loan, and everything you could connect to that. So coming out of that structure, for me to start now going into deeper wells of faith, it had to take something. And I'm talking to somebody today. Yes. You could be here, and your next blessing, the next phase of your life is actually waiting for you, but the only problem is that you are either so comfortable that God has to tell you, like the children of Israel, you've been around this mountain for so long, or you're no longer designing that the reason why manna is no, is no longer testing well is because you've outstayed your, your abode, okay? But what the point I wanted to make, when you enter now, when they enter the promised land, amazingly, manna ceases. Amazingly, manna what? They were not digging in the wilderness. But when they cross into the promised land, now God tells them you have to dig. Why? Because it's amazing. That when a man is living God's best, especially when you're living in the realm of the promise, there is a responsibility that God will hold you against and it will require that you learn the principle of seed and harvest. And this time, because you're not seeding for you, for, for, for your masters, like it was the Egyptian narrative, but you're seeding for yourself. But also, when you understand the principle of seed and harvest, you'll understand the underlying law that has been set in motion for you to even harvest where you've not sowed. That's the essence of blessing. He tells them, I've brought you to a land that belonged not to you, houses that you have not built, vineyards that you have not planted, that you will know that I am the Lord. Okay? Now, supernatural favor, what Vusi was talking about, and blessings start to pursue you and position you in places that your credentials will not enter, your education you know, uh, uh, your education, whatever, proficiency, proficiencies will not provide. Your color will not give. Your networks will not give. Nothing qualifies you for that place. But it had a precedence of faith to come out of the wilderness into this experience. That's when God now starts to talk to Israel about territory. I've given you land, okay? There's a person in Boston with a property. There's another person who has Boston as an inheritance. Those are two different people. You get it? Those are two different people. And whether you want it or not, the spirit realm speaks differently to such people. There are people who have territorial influence 
that wherever they go, that territory yields to them. It's called, in the spirit realm, we call it our crowns of influence. When you learn to influence, when you learn to draw your boundaries of influence, it's important now to understand the place of the heart, what Brian was talking about here. Guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life. The Hebrew word there, issues of life, is the boundaries of life, your boundaries of influence. You can only influence as big as your heart is. God told, David tells God, I want to build your temple and I want to make it this big and this wide and this high. And then Nathan the prophet tells him, you can only do according to what's in your heart. If you have not built this vision in your spirit, listen, there is just no way you can translate some of these things. So it has to begin with you learning how to cultivate and what Brian is saying, envisioning, meditating, speaking, envisioning, meditating, speaking, speaking, and connecting, listening to voices that take you where you belong. You begin from the end and then come back for yourself. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. In the world, they call it fake it till you make it. In Christianity, we say that because you eat, walk it. You get it? So, the power to be. Let me conclude on that. You must know who you are before God. When you understand what the Bible has said about who you are, like I told you, for me, the moment I understood that I was functioning under Abrahamic blessing and that I was a seed of Abraham and that Abraham inherited the earth, I knew there was no place on the earth I could not own property. That was regardless of whether my balances were speaking. And I have entered, the Lord is my witness, I've entered transactions where my books are speaking differently. And I simply said I'm a seed of Abraham. Faith. Now, don't try this at home if you're not ready to believe to the end. <laughs> Otherwise, you might say the pastor said, and then <laughs> you're, you're in trouble. I have, I bear witness before God. It has worked every time. Because my father Abraham is the inheritor of the earth. That's deep. That's deep. So begin firstly from who you are and then cultivate the spirit, fortify it, guard it, build it to a place because I've learned this and this, every successful man knows this. If you have empowered the place of your spirit, the strong spirit of a man will sustain him in any kind of witness. Weakness. But the Bible says, but he that is of a weak spirit, no man can aid. When you learn to build, it's like sometimes we put chairs, 100,000 people. You stand in front of a stadium and there's this kind of part telling you how. Vega Grace. How. You understand? Literally, you start to see some people look at you with this eye of, what are you actually thinking? <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Every business person has this time in life. Mine, for me, it's members, it's church. Every business person has had these places where you have risk to a place and you're like, but what are you doing? But you just feel this voice telling you it's possible. And I cannot tell you how many times I've walked on those grounds and envisioned, envisioned people sitting on those chairs, people feeling. That's how the lame walk, the blind see, the sick are healed. Live on television. You know, we, we live in a world where people say, ah, no, I don't believe in in healing put on our venues <laughs> you understand just put on what for you will see you will see for yourself firsthand you know and I, I thank God that some of these things are proved by the very doctors you know and you, you, you're seeing it in your spirit but you don't it's not yet translated in the physical realm I walk through these chairs and I see them come I see them come I see them come I see them come and I thank God I played in my spirit. The next day, you switch on the lights and they're there. Not everyone who tries it, it will work. You know why? Because it grows. You understand? You're not going to wake up tomorrow and do a 100,000 meeting people when you've not first tried to make 1,000 work, right? Kickstarter concept has filled this room, but this is not the kind of room you had the previous meeting, isn't it? But tomorrow, you're not going to rent a stadium. There's a process. I hope I've answered. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you have answered me. Thank you very much. Of course, my job is to give resources. Apostle Grace has a sermon on how to meditate.
just go to YouTube and you have one hour into that area. How to meditate. <laughs> You're making me feel shy. <laughs> yes. Uh, but there's the, the area of the blessing. There's the part of that question. The blessing of Can I touch that. something on that? Yes, yes. Mama, please allow me. Yes. Remember, in the first session, I touched something called Hebrew, the Hebrew philosophy. Why 40% of the world's wealth has been proved to belong in the hands of the Jews. Huh? Why they owned, they control the biggest percentage of resources on the face of the earth. I'll give you an example. Two or three simple principles I learned through the Jews. One, money is earned. It's not won. Just think about it. In Spanish, you speak Spanish. How do you say, I have won money? How do you say it in Spanish? Huh? Give her a microphone. I just something I want to show you here. How do you say I have won money in Spanish? He ganado dinero. How do you say I have earned money in Spanish? He ganado dinero. Did you know that in Spanish and in French, winning and earning are the same words? In English, it's separated. In the Hebrew, there is no such word as winning money. When you go in the Hebrew language, there's only one word, earning. You understand? How many Christians are in lottery right now? You're already out of God's financial system. <laughs> Did I offend you? <laughs> I learned it from Brother Vusi. <laughs> and when you offend people, they are learning. How many Christians are betting? Isn't money a fake asset? Do you? How many of you? How many of you actually understand that money is a fake asset? Because these are promissory notes with zeros on them, and ideas and concepts that were put in your head. That's the only reason why you see it as value. But if I had a bar of gold and money here, they are not equal assets. Money is a medium of exchange, not interchange. You get it? Now, think very keenly here because this is important for you to understand this. Anything that is in the pattern of winning can never be kept. You get my point? But I also urge that those of you who are in business to be very careful on transactions that engage monies against monies because this is fake asset against fake asset. Usually the spirit realm doesn't know how to play that well. That's why people who have been in forex trading, I'm sorry I'm going to offend again. It's only a matter of time. It will sink you. It might not sink next week. You've heard of all these Ponzi schemes, D9. How, do you, how does a man make a 100% profit on a business? Vusi, why are we still sitting in offices? When a man can make a 100% profit in one month, what are they selling against? Come on, wake up, Christians. And some of you are putting your life savings there. I have seen Christians right now who are in prison. He sold, he gave everything. He sold all his properties and put them into his Ponzi scheme. You understand? There is something I also fear, allow me to add, in a business that uses the word if. Because for me, I believe in when. When you say if, you remember how sometimes they used to sell some some drug companies. So they say, if you find, if you get nine people under your tree, if a young man in Uganda goes and sells land and puts it in an if transaction, if you get nine people, so under that tree, and then they get people who are speaking. One time, I'm on this thing, I know the person speaking very well, and she's saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom now, you know. I, 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 I bought these products and I sold them to five people. And then I, But the person who was saying they were a stay-at-home mom, I was working with them in the bank. They saw me later and I saw them. 
<laughs> and we're out of words. Listen, money is earned. You must understand the principles. Two, there are many, but I, I just, I could I have about 12 of them, but let me give you a second. Jewish philosophy, money is infinite. They don't have a finite conscience of money based on how many dollars or pounds are on the earth. Why? Because like I told you, there are two parallel economies that are working. Those of you who might not believe this, you don't need to believe me. But when Jesus sends, when Peter comes to Jesus and tells him we need to pay taxes, Jesus tells him, go cast your fish and in there you're going to find a coin and pay your taxes and mine. <clears throat> Peter paid taxes. That coin had the inscription of Caesar. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm. But it did not come from Caesar's economy. Mm. Now, do you understand when we talk about houses you didn't build? I told you, if you don't understand God, don't take this. Stay the other world. But... <laughs> Thank you. Do, I, do you understand this? That even these business people who have done businesses no instances where certain profits or incomes came that you cannot explain. That's true. Certain doors and provisions and contracts came from away in places you were not qualified. Mm -hmm. God is trying to tell you, I can actually do exceedingly abundantly above that which you dare to ask or think. I am living proof of a man who walked to me with millions of pounds and signed a document to give me. Those are things I, you can't explain to people and they understand because they will think, ah, you're crazy. But I tell you the truth. Children of Abraham understand this. Yes. Every child of Abraham here yes. understands what I'm talking about. Yes. Money is infinite. Mm. Why? Because it's subject to your creativity. We are rewarded against how much we are able to create. Yes. As long as in this world you have a solution for mankind, it doesn't matter how much money is in print or out of print, somebody will dig a road to find you and they will pay for that price. Are you following? Whether there is recession or no recession, as long as you can answer a certain man's need. Oh yes, COVID people were poor, but Pfizer made money. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? People were broke, but Pfizer what? Made money. <laughs> Made money. You, you get my point. The, the gentleman who gave us Zoom was inconsequential until COVID came. Do yes. you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Do you know how many budgets were affected in companies because of Zoom? You remember how many people used to take flights? We have conferences in Switzerland. Now they just switch on. <laughs> oh, but DM Hakuna, everything was beaten. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because somebody created in the time when man lacked, when nothing was moving on the surface of the earth, they are saying the world's billionaires became richer. Elon Musk made most of his wealth in a time when the world was not working. Oh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I believe in a system that is above what man can explain. All of this is Jewish philosophy. I can explain one upon one upon one upon one. One more. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'll give a... Sorry? No, no, no. Time. Yes. <laughs> I want them to also speak. I'll give you another example. They believe that there are two transactions for every transaction. They believe there's a physical transaction and a spiritual transaction for every transaction. Yes. You get it? The Jews don't believe that every transaction ends in the physical realm. In fact, every transaction begins from the physical. In fact, there are people who have transacted in the spiritual but have not transacted physical. Do you know that? Yes. If I sit down with an architect and he draws something from my mind, okay, or I tell him what I want, and he gets that concept, right? And he doesn't draw it, that concept has stayed in the spiritual. He can even put it on paper. And when he puts it on paper, 
and I'm not yet, yet I have not built it. It's still in its own sense not translated. That's why in that culture they teach about the law of translation. How am I able to get something from the physical realm, spiritual realm, and translate it to the physical? This is important. It doesn't matter what you know, discipline you're under. You must know how to translate things from the physical, spiritual, sorry, to the physical because there's many people here with a lot of potential in the spiritual. This mind, I, I know a guy, and some of you know some of those guys. You sit down two minutes with him, he tells you an idea and you do it. They just know how to give people wisdom, but they never have the power to translate from the spiritual realm to the physical. They can tell you something and you're going to go and do it and it will work. But when they try it, it won't work or they even have no power. Ecclesiastes 6 verses 1. Read your Bible. There is an evil disease that is common among men. For God has given a man riches, glory and honor that that man wanteth nothing, but he has not the power to eat thereof. And a stranger comes, the Bible says, and eateth thereof. And he says, it is an evil disease. It's not cancer, it's not flu, it's not diabetes, but it's eating up Christians every day. There is a man who has learned the wisdom of translating from the hidden world to the world you see. And you have the glory, you have the honor, you have the potential, you have the power, but he knows how to connect to what's on your life, translates it, steals it spiritually. Okay. The, you can sit over lunch and discuss a concept with somebody and they can do it and it works. But you'll never have the power to translate it. So there are principles that also undergird how to translate things. One of which, for example, be careful who you tell your dream. Do you understand? Because one, the power to dream is different from the power to interpret a dream. That's what Joseph had. Joseph both had the power to dream, sorry, to interpret, no, Joseph had the power to interpret the dream. Daniel had the power both to dream and interpret because the king had forgotten the dream, but this man could dream it and interpret it. Why Joseph is put in charge of, of that office of the governor in a foreign land was because he had something no Egyptian had, the power of interpretation. Like there is a person who can interpret, there's also a person who can kill. Do you get it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, especially when they're still in the concept period, concept. Huh? Be very careful who hears this concept. I don't discuss my dreams with everybody. I discuss or submit them to somebody who has the power to give me direction and I need midwives in that period. Some of them are, can be spiritual people. I've had people who have come to me with things and we just prayed for them and the next day they got them. You get my point? Just like that. Some of them are the Vusi kind. This is what they do, that you can go to him and tell him, man, I'm dreaming about this, but you don't know how. But he has a pattern of interpretation. And he'll tell you, if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you can get that dream. And some of you take the dreams to the wrong places. Haven't you noticed that many a time the dreams you share with people or the plans, the programs, the projects that are coming, some of them are immediately aborted? You know, we just signed a contract. We're going to be doing this and immediately something just comes and intercepts this. You have noticed that pattern for 10 years, 15 years and common sense doesn't tell you that the wrong ears are conceiving your dream. Do you know, have, how many of you have been on tables, you've sat down, you've had somebody discuss a concept or you've discussed it and somebody snatched it immediately and tomorrow they are running the same business that you discussed on that chair but you have no power to translate it. This is important. This is very important to know how to translate from the realm unseen to the realm that we see. Let me talk about the two, the two transactions. You must learn how God creates. Okay? Look at how God creates. Look at the simple pattern. In Genesis 1, 26, 27, what does it say? Read your Bible. He said, let us create man in our own image and likeness and in his own image created he male and female created them isn't it create underline the word create genesis 2 7 this is the second chapter 
And now, read Genesis 2, 7. And now, God, I don't have it here, but I'll get it off head. And now, God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and that man became a living soul. What did God first do? Before he what? He did a spiritual copy of man before he made the physical copy of man. Your creative potential is not in the physical realm. The physical realm is simply a manifestational realm. Your creative realm is in the spiritual. When a man has created in the spirit enough, there is no way he can form. That is why you never underestimate the power of this mind. You remember Genesis 11, 11? And these people, the Bible says, were of one language and one speech. And they said, let us build a tower to go to heaven. And they did. And when they did, was it 11? 11, 1? Huh? From the, is it 11, 1? It begins from 11, 1. Yes. But down there, God comes just down here. These people literally are rebelling against God. Remember, Babylon. Babel means rebellion. Rebellion. They're rebelling against divine order. But they're building something. An edifice going to heaven. And they said, listen, we are going to build a building up to heaven. Up to heaven. If you read the literal Hebrew, it's not just heaven in the sky. It's through the mesosphere, stratosphere, Tropos to the highest point. Remember, the moon is about 386,000 kilometers from the earth. These guys are going to build higher than that. And God said it's actually possible. He comes down and looks at what they've built and he says, these people beginning to build, he says, let us go down and confound them. Because they are one language and one speech, now nothing they imagine, he said, shall be restrained from them. These are not men with God. These are men who are not working with God, but bear the image and likeness of God. And he said, if we don't go down to confound these fellows, they are going to build it to heaven. How they were going to do it, we don't know. But we know that where a man has willed, and activated that creative faculty in their spirit, there is nothing on the earth that can stop that man from manifesting it. We invest a lot of time in forms and not in the creative realm. Learn to create more than forming. If you learn how the creative faculties form, you'll be amazed how the physical realm works. It's apocalypsis. It begins with apocalypsis. The light that shines on what you must see and the eyes that must see what you must see because it's one thing to come in a building and, and, and it's dark, but there's something for you to see. Oh, it's another thing for you to come in a building where indeed there is no light on, but your eyes can see. You, you lose vision of both. So your eye has to see, but you need the light to cast on what you must see. Most important, apocalypse is the unveiling of things. Because everything you see is by the mother Sophia, wisdom. She's the mother of all witty, witty inventions. Listen to how the Jews think. Nothing going to be created is new. Everything existed from the creation of the world. Men are just discovering it. Zoom existed, but its function had not yet just yet come. If God can find a man whose vision is precise enough to see and reconcile with the time and the need or urgency of that thing, then you got it? Then that thing must manifest through anybody who is able to access it. That's just how the spirit realm works. Are you following what I'm saying? Your Bible says, known are all the works of God from the beginning. Known are all the works of God from the beginning. That means there is nothing coming on the earth new that God didn't know. Internet existed before a man found it. That's why this message we're teaching, if you read your Bible, these words are life to them that find Am I preaching? Yes. These are things you find. These are things you find. These are things, I repeat the third time, you find. When you understand the power to find. You know, some of you are saying, I'm poor. No, you're not poor. You've just not yet found. Did you get it? Yes. If you can find, that's why you, your prayers must change from God give me a job. That's myopic. God, let me see what the world needs. Internet existed. 
it had just not met the man who was able to see it and create it for the world to see. It was existent in seed form. He just needed a man who could access it and translate it for the man to see. Everything is finished. There's nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes says. There is nothing new under the sun. For you, it is a new Samsung. But heaven had this technology long ago. It's somewhere in a certain human being, somewhere. It's waiting for translation. When you understand that, you'll realize why it's on record that the biggest creators on earth are Jews. Because they learned that power since childhood. The biggest creators, whether you're talking of technology, whether you're talking of health, whether you're talking whatever systems, armory, you go back to them because they know how to connect to the creative faculty. I'm done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We will come back and Apostle Grace will close us out. But